In today's video, I'm going to go ahead and go over how to activate HTTPS decryption in your environment. Um, it's actually a fairly simple process. All the steps can be found on the WebSense support page by typing in how to work with encrypted data. And let's working with encrypted data is the title you want to look for. And I want to narrow that down a bit more to specify my product and my version. So Web Security Gateway Anywhere and version 7.8 is what I'm currently on. And you can see that it narrows it down to this particular article at the very top. I'll go ahead and click on that. And this just kind of gives a rundown of all of the various functionality that WebSense can perform on encrypted data. Um, as I said earlier, today's video will be focusing on how to enable HTTPS decryption within your environment. The process is actually fairly simple. There's only a few steps to it. Um, your first step is going to be uh, creating the subordinate CA that you're going to use uh, to create that encrypted connection between the client and the proxy. Um, the next step will be activating uh, HTTPS decryption on the actual proxy itself and then the third will be uploading the certificate that you created to the content gateway. Fairly simple process the whole thing should take no more than 15 to 20 minutes to complete. I, As always I never recommend um, making these changes during production times. Um, always schedule do this during scheduled outages or at a time of very low traffic, just in case anything comes up. Um, also, on another note, please make sure when you are, or before you enable SSL decryption, that you apply any necessary hotfixes to either your appliance or the Linux-based content gateway that you're running. Um, it's always important to go to w the WebSense hotfix page and see what you can find. So you can see on this page, um, on the right pane, there's actually a quick link that takes me right to hotfixes and downloads. And I can peer through there to see if they're, what the latest hotfix um, is and if it's available for my particular installation. So with that said, um, we'll go ahead and talk about the very first step, and that is actually creating the uh, certificate. So if we scroll down through this article, we can see there's one here that talks about um, the internal root CA. Uh, if we go ahead and click on that, it takes me to another article just explaining the various methods that you can use um, in order to decrypt HTTPS traffic. Uh, so you have three available ways to do this to you. Um, you can use your internal root certificate um, and import that onto the content gateway for decryption. Um, you have the ability to create a subordinate CA, which is the method we're going to use today. And you also have the ability to create your own self-signed certificate on the web content gateway itself. Um, the reason we recommend creating a sub-CA is because it's not only um, probably the most widely used method, but it's also uh, one of the safest to use because you have the ability to revoke the certificate if by chance it ever were to be compromised in any way. Not very likely, but um, it's, it's definitely a best practice if you have the ability to use a sub-CA. So um, you can see that, uh, like I talked about er earlier, this page explains those options and you basically just decide which one you're going to use and you'll click on it and it will give you steps on how to um, create the certificate using that process. So I'll click on creating a subordinate CA and you can see it takes me right to a page explaining exactly how to create the certificate. Um, gives you everything uh, from the commands to use as well as the files that you should expect to see when it, the uh, certificate is created. So your first step in this process is going to be to create a certificate signing request and you're going to have going to also get out of that an associated certificate key file and you can see those right here. Um, make sure to remember the passphrase that you input 
when you are creating uh, the certificate. That's very important. Uh, do not forget that passphrase. I would store that if you have any kind of password vault or anything like that. Make sure you keep that in a safe place, um, but also make sure that it is a uh, complicated password. After that, what you'll do is you'll um, go into your uh, root CA server, um, generally a domain controller, and you'll start up the Microsoft Certificate Services um, application. And that's simply done by going to the web address that's shown right here. And you will actually copy your uh, certificate signing request as stated in here, I would use WordPad, copy the text out, and when you open up the um, cert servers, uh, service on inter or through Internet Explorer on your certificate server, you'll just follow the steps outlined to create the final set of certificate items that you'll need uh, to upload to the content gateway itself. So like I said earlier, just follow these steps it'll walk you through the entire process. In the end, what you're going to end up with are certificates that look like this. You will have three files. You have a .cer file, which is your actual certificate, a certificate signing request, and a .key file. You want to hold on to all three and keep them in a very safe spot. If we double click on the certificate file, you'll see its information pop up, and you should see that it's been signed by your root certificate authority within your environment. Something to note, when you're creating the certificate signing request in the OpenSSL steps, let me go back up to that real quick. If you have multiple content gateways within your environment or multiple appliances that will be doing SSL decryption. What you want to do is for the organizational name, or I'm sorry, the CN name, that's the common name of the, uh, the certificate that you create, um, I would recommend doing a wildcard. So a star dot your domain dot com. If you only have one appliance or proxy server, within your environment, I recommend using the host name of the content gateway here. However, utilizing the wildcard here is much easier. Um, also, something else to note, when you open up the uh, cert server on your uh, root certificate um, control domain controller, uh, I did run into one issue that I had to um, kind of figure out on my own and it has to do with uh, server 2008 2008 changing the default um, document page location um, for in IIS for that particular service I'll show you that real quick so when you open up um, your cert server service you may get a forbidden error um, saying the page cannot be found or the directory cannot be accessed something that's easy to look at is if you click on the search server um, web page service under IIS and then you click on basic settings you can see it asks what the path is that the default page is contained in you're looking for I believe it's the home dot ASP page and for whatever reason in mine um, it did not have the uh, it was not pointing to this subdirectory en dash us it was only pointing to this particular subdirectory um, what you need to do is just click on that setting and make sure it's pointed to the folder that contains that um, home.asp page once I did that the uh, service popped right up with no issues at all and I can show you what that looks like real quick there you go and this is what you will see and uh, once again, the instructions on this page will walk you through all the steps you need to create your certificate. 
So once the certificate is created, your next step is going to be going onto the content gateway and activating HTTPS. That setting is located right here under protocols. You can see it. You'll just select on and hit apply. And it notes that there's a restart required, so we'll go ahead and restart the content gateway. Um, one other step that I didn't really mention um, is when you when you run the certificate services on the root CA server, um, when you run this this website, um, you want to right click and run Internet Explorer as an administrator when you open it up. That allows you to have the correct templates populated um, so you're able to create a subordinate CA. Alright, looks like our content gateway is restarted. Now what we're going to do is simply go to the SSL selection down here, which was not there earlier. It activates when you turn on HTTPS. We're going to go to internal root CA. And now what you're going to do is you're going to browse to the folder where those new certificate files were created that I showed earlier. So you see the cert file, the certificate signing request file, and the key file. So we'll go ahead and browse to that folder, then simply double click the certificate file. Then we have to import the private key file, so that wcg.key, and then the passphrase that you used when you created the certificate signing request. So let's go ahead and populate that. Then you can go ahead and hit click import root CA. You can see it was success. You have just imported your CA and now you need to restart the content gateway. So we'll go ahead and go to my proxy basic and restart. <clears throat> okay, so the content gateway has restarted. Um, and HTTPS decryption is now activated. There's a couple of ways we can verify this. Um, one is by actually going into a client machine that is currently going through the proxy and making sure that their traffic is being decrypted. And this can be verified by looking at the certificate that's presented to them when they visit an HTTPS page. So let's go ahead and open up Internet Explorer and we can quickly see Google right off the bat is uh, encrypted. So what we can do is click on this link right here. It looks like a little lock. This will show the certificate chain. We can quickly actually identify it here by seeing it says Rasta Lab CA has identified the site as google.com. So that means my certificate authority has actually issued um, or initiated the encryption to google.com. If I click on view certificates, I can see this is my certificate right here that is doing the uh, encryption process. If I click on certificate path, I can see that it's signed by my root. The certificate that is issued to Google was um, issued by the sub-CA I created for HTTPS decryption. So that's one way to verify that HTTPS decryption is working properly. Another is simply going to be going into real-time monitor in your Triton dashboard. And I'm going to change the refresh interval to a lower number. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is run some traffic through that test client I brought up a second ago and see if I have visibility into the URL that I am visiting over a secure connection. So I just went back to google.com 
<clears throat> oh, sorry about that. I actually need to switch to the gateway that that client is going through. Let me do that real quick. Alright, so now let me visit google.com one more time, and I should see its HTTPS traffic pop up in the real-time monitor. And there it is. You can see we have full visibility into the connection. I can see the entire um, URL request, as well as any added parameters at the end. Um, this shows very definitively that I am sitting in between that uh, HTTPS request and its final destination. I'm acting as a man in the middle in this case. So the proxy is essentially uh, establishing an encrypted connection between your end user and itself and then the proxy is making the request on behalf of the end user to the final destination page, in this case google.com. The decrypted traffic never leaves the gateway. And something else to note, in order for HTTPS decryption to function properly, your end users must trust your company's root certificate within their trusted root certificate authority store. This would be done by your um, Active Directory administrators or your system admins. Um, we can view this to make sure that it is by going to Internet Options, Content, clicking on certificates and we can see that if we go to the trusted root certificate authorities and I scroll down I can see that my company's root certificate is in the trusted root certificate authority store okay and with that said um, that sums up enabling HTTPS decryption in your WebSense environment. As always, if you have any questions, um, please contact uh, WebSense support or your WebSense representative. Um, in this case, the support portal is going to be one of your best resources to find any information on creating certificates. Um, as we went over in the beginning of the video, you type in the phrase working with encrypted data, you will find an abundance of information explaining how SSL decryption works, what scenarios to use it in, and how to troubleshoot any issues you may that may arise when using it. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful.